All right, guys, so Elder Scrolls Blades version 1.4 just went live today, which is October 9th, 2019. Bethesda has released a blog post, which I want to talk through because I am a huge fan of Blades, and it's interesting to see them continuing to support a free-to-play mobile game which will eventually work its way to PC and to consoles, but for now it's still rooted in uh, mobile space. I've been playing it pretty much every day since launch, and I've beaten the main story. I am where most people are, kind of grinding towards the end of the abyss, continuing to level up my character, continuing to grind materials to build up my town, and just having a lot of fun with the five to 10 minute experiences that I've been having from the beginning. So I'm really excited that patch 1.4 comes out because it changes a lot of core mechanics. And I do have one frustration and that's they're not letting us respec our character for free because I think this expansion and the new things that they have added greatly change how my character was built. And it really makes me rethink my current build. You can rebuild your character with gems, which are a microtransaction like currency, or you can earn them in-game doing daily quests, opening chests, and defeating enemies. All right, so the big update is called the Witches Festival, which transforms your entire town into a spooky Halloween-themed experience. You'll find cobwebs and creepy music. It's turned from day to night. It has a really cool ambience to it. And I hope that now that we have seen that Bethesda can implement a night system in our town, I would absolutely love if when you come back from doing quests to level up your town and talk with the blacksmith and our alchemist and upgrade your village that uh, they do implement maybe not a dynamic night day scale, but I would love to see them alternate between day and night. I think that would make the game a lot cooler. Um, so they've added a couple new quests. And um, the big thing is the spell overhaul. And that's where I said my frustration lies in not letting us respec. So let's just go through all of these. Um, I'm not all of them, rather. There's a lot. I'm just going to hit on a few of them. Um, as I mentioned, there's four new quests that you'll get from Townskeeper. They're all very basic quests, but they're themed kind of, you know, with the scoop, spooky monster you fight. One of them you fight the Spider Queen, uh, which is kind of neat. You fight a lot of uh, ghouls and another one. And that's fun. Um, as far as I can tell, um, I don't think they're repeatable. I could be wrong. So this content can be experienced in probably half an hour, which for a free-to-play mobile game isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, however... Uh, what, what what is going to persist throughout and where I will definitely be spending more time on is the spell overhaul. Several permanent changes to spells are afoot. Casting can no longer be interrupted and the willpower perk now provides damage resistance when casting and spells are more powerful. This is huge because if you've ever played any Elder Scroll game dating back to Elder Scrolls 1, you know as well as I do that a pure magic build has never been viable in an Elder Scrolls game. I think the closest we saw it was probably with Morrowind when you had the ability to create your own spells. And you could tune spells between range and touch spells to fine tune and make the perfect spell you wanted. Unfortunately, that system was abandoned by the time we got to Oblivion. Um, you could argue that Skyrim maybe gives you a little bit more advantage when it comes to spell casting, but most of these games are melee weapons with the occasional spell trickled in. Unfortunately, due to the way that Elder Scrolls Blade's previous spell casting system worked, you really didn't have much in the way of spell casting because every time you got hit, the spell stopped, it was over. So you had to have a really good shield or a good sword that would be like a two-handed weapon that allowed you to basically face tank a couple hits uh, to get down the rhythm of an enemy attack to pull off a perfect dodge, which an enemy would hit you and then kind of flail back wildly. And if you were fast enough, you could probably get off one spell. And that was it. And then rinse and repeat. It was definitely not an ability where, like when you're playing uh, Elder Scrolls uh, V Skyrim, where you could just stand there with like a fire spell. And as you're getting hit, you're just casting. 
So the fact that they have changed that and you can now cast through attacks makes spells much better. You can hit poison spells early on in fights so poison can begin ticking. You can um, have your fire attack going on enemies like wisps and skeevers who kind of engage and disengage so you're constantly pressuring them offensively. It really does change a lot in this game and my current build on Blades is very melee based, very heavy matching armor set and barbarian and a lot of, you know, perfect strike, perfect uh, uh, dodge kind of stuff. That's where I spent most of my talent points. I really didn't touch much spell at all. I dabbled a little bit with poison, particularly if you saw my previous video where I opened my first ever legendary chest. I did get a sword in a ring which amplified my poison damage, which helped a little bit. But unfortunately, because it takes so long to cast, it wasn't very viable. So now that implementation is going to make the game infinitely more fun. Uh, so as I mentioned before, there are, you know, with this Halloween theme, you're going to see a lot of different decorations. They've added different sound effects for light attacks and heavy attacks. They have new decorations inside the town that you can buy permanently. Also, the town itself looks different. There's more cobwebs, as I mentioned, the day versus night thing. Um, combat. Spells are no longer interrupted. Fireballs deal more damage. Wall of Fire is less damage to the caster, which is one of the dumbest things in this game, that you put down a spell that hurts you. I have no idea why they put this in the game. So the fact that the spell damage is reduced to at least you makes it somewhat more viable. Uh, casting time for Poison Cloud has been reduced and deals more damage. Paralyzed deals more damage. Echo Weapon now provides more damage at certain ranks due to an error in the rounding, which is something that I had read about on the forums before. Essentially, you would clone a weapon, which is what the Echo Weapon does, and it would always give you a weaker roll than what your weapon was, and it just didn't make a whole lot of sense. So that seems a lot more viable. Um, and basically, across the board, spells do more damage. Um, Enemies, um, there's some stuff in here. Enemies, how certain enemies are react to their elemental weaknesses, for example. Um, it helps that the enemies are weaker, so your damage, your spells are going to do more. And also, I wonder if we're going to start to see, and I'll have to play with this a little more, if some of the resist damage has gone down a little bit. A lot of times you cast a spell and it just says resist, 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 or it just pings at like one damage, which is totally useless. We'll have to see about that. Um... We have, um, we talked about the quests here, uh, a lot of bug fixes that they've implemented. Um, I just think it's really good. I mean, for a mobile game, this is a lot of stuff. It really, really is. And I hope that as they continue to build on this free-to-play experience and continue to add more events and continue to add more uh, RPG systems into the game, still favoring more or more towards RPG light, but I think the fact that they're going to be adding more RPG systems and we're going to get to see a little bit more viable builds outside of just spamming a legendary sword of fire that does the perfect roll that you see all the time on subreddit with that 68 fire damage. I'm really excited. And as this game transitions into PC and uh, console play, I think you'll see a more influx of people looking for those quick Elder Scroll-like experiences. And hopefully this game has more teeth that can kind of keep the player engaged. It's still in beta form, so I'm not picking on the game too much. I had an absolute blast playing the core experience, but definitely now that the game is done and I'm just grinding the abyss and building up my town, the fun is definitely diminished greatly. Stuff like this reinvigorates me, wants me to sign back in. I want to continue playing. I want to enjoy this game. So there you guys have it, a somewhat detailed look at update 1.4 for Elder Scrolls Blades. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you guys are playing Blades. Let me know what you think about this new build. Does it, or rather the new system, does it make you want to change your build? Or are you happy with what you have? You might be like me and have a pretty good two-handed sword and you just really don't care. But I do care and I want to invest in magic and I'm really excited to re-roll my character and try again. With that, I'd like to close out this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.